what happens when you blend machine learning and artificial intelligence with a hearing aid? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Dr. Achin Bomek. He is the Chief Technology Officer and Executive Vice President of Engineering at Starkey Hearing Technologies. Welcome, Achin. Thank you, Tanya. What does Starkey do? So Starkey Hearing Technologies is the only American-owned and operated hearing aid manufacturer. We make hearing aids that help people hear better and live better lives. How are you using artificial intelligence to actually improve hearing? Great. I'm excited to share that with you. So if it's for the first time, we are bringing in technologies, advanced technologies like embedded sensors and artificial intelligence into this device to transform what is traditional definition of a hearing aid. And let me just explain a bit. Hearing aids, and actually I'm just uh, holding up a device right now, is a white color one. It's our product we just launched, Livio AI. And it is a black colored one. We have a number of colors, depending on what color your customers prefer. And it, it's a device that's ergonomically designed. It goes right into, into the back of your ear and the receiver device goes into your ear to make sound. So the device, for the first time, we have built in 3D inertial motion sensors and machine learning and artificial intelligence technologies to turn this into four function into the same device. Let me just explain to you what those are. First and foremost, this is the best sounding hearing aid that we have ever made. So what, does, what it does, it will take the sound from your environment and then amplify it according to your specific hearing loss. So it will fit your audiogram, which is looking at the frequencies where you have hearing issues and it will just amplify those sounds more than others to help you hear the natural sound of the world in a natural way. That's traditional function of a hearing aid. We expect hearing aids to do that. By the way, while at that, this same hearing aid has Bluetooth low energy chip built in. So it's my Bluetooth headset device. I can stream phone calls, music, any other app from the phone straight into my, my ear, right? One thing I should mention before I dive into advanced technologies, it's also got 45 hours of battery life. No, I didn't miss a digit. It's not four, five, it's 45 hours. If you nonstop stream music and sound from your iPhone into the hearing aid, you're gonna get 45 hours of battery life. So that's all part of a classic hearing aid function, helps you hear better. But we've gone a few steps further than that with this device. We have built in AI and embedded sensors to turn the same device into your fitness tracker in ways that it tracks your physical activities, like number of steps, your extent of physical activities, just like your fitness trackers might do. But you've gone one step further. It also has go for a walk? brain fitness measurement capabilities, where we are measuring your cognitive fitness. How socially engaged have you been? We're using machine learning to classify or recognize uh, your conversations, are you having conversations today? Are you socially engaged or are you sitting down in your room by yourself? So you're measuring both your cognitive fitness and your body fitness. And so this is your built-in fitness tracker for the first time in hearing aid. Number three, we have built-in language translation capabilities into this hearing aid. So think about, uh, you know, I am an English speaker. I don't speak French, but if I'm in France and I, 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 I'm speaking Hi. in English, and I'm wearing a hearing aid, yeah. Livio AI. Sorry. The person who's listening to me is, fr is, is French. And so he sees, he or she sees the translation on my screen from English to French. But when he or she speaks back, my hearing aid translates it back to me in English. Would you like something to drink? Yes, wine please. Number four, by the way, that was also for the first time ever in a hearing aid. Oh, Number four, we're utilizing the same sensors and machine learning capabilities to automatically detect if the hearing aid wearer falls down and send an alert to the loved ones that uh, there was a fall. Fall is a big problem, right? It's a multi-billion dollar uh, health issue. So our hearing aid for the first time can recognize if you fell and send an alert. So it's really a multifunctional, multi-purpose device. And I kind of compare this with the journey that phones went through back in 2007. Phones were just phones. You used to use a phone to make a phone call. But with the introduction of iPhone and subsequently, phone has become multi-purpose devices. We have taken the same journey. I like to say what Apple did to phones back in 2007, Starkey is doing to hearing aids today. How did you go about building the data set underlining your artificial intelligence? That's a great question. 
So as you know, artificial intelligence algorithms have evolved over the last few years, and now they are practically uh, where they are, could be built into products, but it's all about the data sets and the specific architecture for the product. If you think about the hearing it as a, as a compute platform, we have an amazing digital signal processor, extremely low power chip that's built into here. It's also connected with the phone, as I mentioned. So for some of the heavy AI applications, we can also tap into the connectivity with the phone, which is also connected to the cloud, right? So, but for most of the machine learning capabilities, we can classify those or run those in the hearing aid itself. For that, we have gone and collected tons of data to train our neural nets, our uh, AI framework. Uh, for example, for classifying human speech and extract that out of the environment, we have collected hundreds and thousands of speech files and, and we have annotated them, trained our AI system with that, so we are able to automatically determine what kind of acoustic environment you're in. Are you in a quiet environment? Are you in a, in a quiet environment where there is some people talking to each other? Are you in a restaurant where there is speech in noise situation? Or is there a machine noise going around? So we can classify, is there music? We can automatically classify those with artificial intelligence. That's one example. Second example, the same device is also able to classify and characterize your physical movements, detect if you fell. That requires different kinds of data. So yes, we have taken the time to develop, annotate the data, the AI framework, and have a classification scheme that utilizes the digital signal processor chip in the hearing aid itself, but also tap into the power of the phone and the cloud when you have to, like a sophisticated language model. You know, we translate from any language of a set of 27 languages to any of the other 27 languages. That requires tremendous amounts of uh, memory and computation capabilities. For that, we are actually tapping into both the hearing aid the, and the cloud infrastructure together. What do you see for the future of wearable health devices and the future of perceptual computing? It's a great question again. So the future, in, 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 in my view, the future is now, it starts here. Because the technology is always going to get better and better. But if you look at the how various elements of pieces are coming together right now. It's about having sensor, having computing platform, having connectivity to the cloud. I compared that with, you mentioned perceptual computing. The reason I call it perceptual computing is because you just have to look at the human system. What, what sets humans apart from the rest of the biological uh, things in the world? Our sensors are amazing, our eyes, ears, the sense of smell, taste, and our vestibular sensing of motions, quite amazing set of sensors we have. But then we have also cerebral cortex, which is an extremely efficient processor for signals that are coming from each of these sensors, right? And we are able to learn. We are not programmed to do everything by ourselves. So by looking at the technology, we're bringing in elements of those into devices. The same technology that, you know, making autonomous cars, the cars drive by themselves, or drone, fly by themselves around trees and houses and not run into them. You know, that, that was my world at Intel. I worked on uh, using technology to make smart machines. We are tapping into similar technologies, cutting edge advanced sensor technologies, the most advanced machine learning and artificial intelligence technologies. But now, instead of using those technologies to make smart machines, I am able to bring those technologies to help humans hear better and lead better lives, right? So I think that feature already started. And over the course of time, uh, this is only the first step. We're going to step up on this to turn these devices like hearing aids into even more multifunctional devices that help you in your day-to-day -day life. It monitors your health and helps you live better lives. Dr. H.N. Bomek, Chief Technology Officer and Executive Vice President of Engineering at Starkey Hearing Technologies. You are truly taking us into the world of the matrix. Very exciting stuff. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your technology or maybe they want to connect with you personally. How can they do that? Thank you, Tanya. So the easiest way to get to us is starkey.com and any relevant questions or requests will be routed to the to proper place. If it's a relevant question for me, it will come to me. So please encourage your viewers to go to starkey.com and uh, let's work together to change the world changing the world. Certainly you are. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe go to my website. I'm at tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.